Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome back to more Plague Inc. Evolved Custom Scenarios. I found a scenario that I want to give a shot today based on something that is very real and terrifying. It's called Stone Man Syndrome. Now that's kind of more the colloquial name for it. There is a different name for it and it's kind of long and complicated. I think it's pronounced Fibodysplasia Ossificans Progressiva? Ossificans Progressiva? I don't know, FOP. This is basically an extremely rare heritable disease where your muscles start turning into bone. And we've actually seen something kind of like this in uh, some different SCP-based scenarios, but this is the real thing, and people actually do suffer from this. And, uh, you know, since I'm a little bit low on some content in Plague Inc. while I wait for the Cure update to come out, uh, I thought I'd go ahead and dive through some real-life diseases and see what's interesting, and this one caught my eye, so here we are. Normal difficulty, but I don't get to decide on any of our genes. Alright, FOP. Just a rare genetic disease. Hello and welcome in this scenario. As you already know, you are FOP, a genetic disease, so you can't infect other people. How is that gonna work? But now things are changed and a bacterium is spreading the disease throat replication. Will it be enough to exterminate humanity? Okay, so now we are transmissible. Previously it was just a heretical thing and you can't spread it because it's not contagious. Now we're contagious in Saudi Arabia specifically, as we often do. All right, fine, here we go. Transmissions, what do we got? Well, quite a few options actually. We have our insects, our blood, our saliva, our rodents, our air, our water, our livestock, and our birds. Basically all normal except for occasionally saliva and uh, rearranged. Can't trick me, that's all normal stuff. Trans, us uh, for symptoms, we have sweating. Okay, this is different because we only have one option. Sweating only? Well, that's not so good for starting in Saudi Arabia, but okay. We've got DNA duplication. Okay, mutation speed, and we have drug resistance, and we have heat and cold resistance. Now, for a bacterial type, usually this would be something like the bacterial shell for more uh, environmental resistance. Instead, we have basically a virus mutation. Okay. Well, that's a little unusual, but all right, we'll work with it. So far, somewhat generic, but not absurdly so. Hoping to find some really cool symptoms, though, that actually are reminiscent of the real disease. So we'll start with the sweating. I suppose it's relatively cheap. That leads to ossification. The ossification begins to extend to other bones, causing physiologic issues. Yeah, I imagine that would be the case. We'll go ahead and pick that up for a little extra severity. That also leads to bunion. The first symptom of FOP is this, just a deformed big toe. What the freaking heck is a bunion? I, I, know, I know I've heard the term, like I know it has to do with your toes and stuff, but I've always kind of taken it to be more like a callus on the toe, but I know that's not correct, that's not what it is. What exactly qualifies as a bunion? I probably will look this up afterwards, and I'm going to look at some images, and it's going to give me nightmares. Just saying, that's most likely what's going to end up happening. We'll go for some air transmission, because of course starting off in Saudi Arabia means you want to get some of that a little early on. Saliva's not half bad, we'll go ahead and pick that up. Mostly infective in the poor regions, kind of like the blood, so I feel like you only have to get one or the other and not both. Uh, we could go for the rodents, could go for the livestock. I would like to actually go for something like water, though, just so we have a little bit more transmissibility getting out of Saudi Arabia. Lots of stuff that's happening in the world so far between the Rio Olympics and earthquakes and stuff, but I'm not really paying attention to any of that stuff. I don't feel like it matters all that much. So, yeah, um, I think we just sort of sit back and wait for a little bit of DNA here. Bunions. It's a weird name, right? It's a weird, it's a weird word. I think just saying the word bunion is... I don't know. It, 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 my, my head can't help but go to things like onions? Which I know is wrong, but that's sort of where it's going. I don't know. It's just weird. It's just weird. Anyway, swelling. Spontaneous and sporadic swellings appear and calcify into bones. Kind of like cysts, I guess? Bone-like cysts? Somewhere in your body? Ugh, terrible. Fake tumors. Yep, that actually sounds very similar to the fake cysts. Bones bulges are confused with bones tumors. This brings doctors to try and excise them, but with the result of speeding the disease. Speeding it up, spreading the disease. I'm not sure what was exactly intended there, but there you go. Okay, rural livestock's actually a problem. We do need to get some livestock transmission to counteract some of that, if at all possible. Would like to get some cold resistance going, if possible, but I think we'll go for the drug resistance as we sped faster in Europe. Projectile vomiting. Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. We've done nothing vomit-related. How do we have projectile vomiting combos? Oh, that's just bizarre. Anyone want to explain that one to me? Come up with a very creative interpretation for how that would be possible. I don't know. There's the bunions. All right. We got them whether I like it or not. That leads to muscles ossification. Here's the main crux of the disease. Inflammation caused by muscle ossification obstructs bodily processes. Swelling can obstruct breathing and be fatal. Well, that just sounds like generic inflammation. Where's the whole ossification turning into bones? I mean, it's sort of happening, but you know. 
I just feel like you could elaborate on that a little bit more. Let's go over some bird transmission just to get a little bit more uh, land transmission going. Try to get into some other neighboring countries and speed up the disease a little bit. Wouldn't be a bad idea to go for some more drug resistance since we seem to be going a little bit slowly in Europe right now. Also, some more cold resistance would probably be wise. Then we just go ahead and start ramping up the severity, which right now is actually a little on the slow side. I just don't want lethality as a thing. We can get a little bit with Muscles Ossification, but much more than this would actually be a little bit dangerous, I think. Paralysis. Mutated genes begin to attack other kinds of I tissues like ligaments, causing paralysis. Yeah, that makes sense. If your ligaments aren't working very well, your bones aren't going to be very flexible and moving around, your joints are going to get messed up, and you you're going to lose all locomotion. That's what's going to happen. Makes sense. Excessive bones. Excessive bones layers immobilize the subject in a specific position, and trying to break bones to find a solution can only increase the amount of layers. So I guess I guess it's supposed to be that as you uh, basically have to break the bones in order to regain some locomotion, it kind of reheals over the cracks and creates new layers, which only exacerbates the problem. I guess. Gosh, what a horrible situation to be in. Like, geez, dude, that's actually horrifying. Like, you have to move. But every time you move, you're making it worse long term, so you don't want to move. Like, there's a, it's a complete no-win situation. Complete and utter no-win. Terrifying. Anyway, let's go for some more cold resistance. Uh, let's see, we did get the excessive bones. So, we could go for paralysis, I guess. I think that actually reduces... No, it does increase lethality, but very, very slightly. We'll pick that up. That leads to internal ossification. Serious issues are brought with the ossification of the inner body, causing organs and tissues to change into bone. Blech. It was an SCP scenario that was based on this, right? That turned, like, the entire body into bone? But I wonder if that SCP scenario was, like, based on this actual disease. Do you think that was an inspiration? It would make sense to me if it were. Let's go for a bit more livestock disease. Just trying to spread faster. In Russia, try to get into Greenland. What are we missing right now? Just Greenland. That's it. We can just get out of the Greenland. There it is. We got out of the Greenland. Now we got to go and have some fun. And I say fun, knowing full well I might be being insensitive to some people, and I do apologize if that's the case. We're trying to be lighthearted here. That's the only way that we can cope. Fake tumors. Then we have turbo. Usually, Munchmeyer's disease? I don't know how you say that. Take a lot of time before starting to kill subjects. This turbo brings life expectancy from 40 years to two months or less. Yet it does so without increasing lethality. Explain that one to me. So how does, how does Munchmeyer's disease... Uh, relate to this? I actually have no idea. Oh well, anyway, apparently people could live for like 40 years, which actually surprises me given the nature of this disease and how absolutely terrifying it is. We just went ahead and mutated the next one, systemic failure. Organs start, start to stop working due to the amount of calcified tissues in the organism's vulnerability. Yeah, that would make sense. If your organs are starting to get layers of bone kind of built into them, that might impede their ability to actually do their job a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm tracking so far. I think that is kind of like being, um... Oh, necrosis. Actually, necrosis is great for me because I am actually was worried about getting too much lethality. So, yeah, we're good there. This actually kind of reminds me a little bit of cirrhosis. Uh, not, not quite literally. Like, this is actually more terrifying and more calcifying. But, like, cirrhosis of the liver, for example, where it, like, literally starts hardening and messing up the ability of your liver to function, which is something I had to worry about for a while back when my uh, liver was... In question, I suppose technically that is still a bit of a risk. I haven't been tested to make sure that I'm still good. But yeah, um, kind of similar to that, but like all your organs. Ugh, terrible. Heart failure. Yep, yep. Chest compression brings the heart to fail and collapse. Why would chest compression do that? I would imagine the calcification inside of your heart would do that. And I imagine the inability of your chest to move would make it difficult to breathe. But I guess somehow it's compressing. That means that there's pressure on your chest pushing down on the heart until it, I guess... Go splat? I don't know. Whatever. Asphyxia. That makes more sense. Too many bones near the lungs. Patients can't breathe anymore. Yup, that makes sense. Coma. Neuropathic effects in the brainstem. Cause loss of consciousness and sometimes death. I would think neuropathic effects in the brainstem guaranteed causes death. But no, it's a very small amount of lethality. And that leads to brain failure. Goodbye, Caroline. Okay, terrifying. Uh, okay, so let's go for a little bit of uh, genetic reshuffles. Just trying to buy back a little bit of score. The coma will do some of that work for me, but now we just sort of sit back and wait until we win because we got more than enough lethality at this point. The whole world's dead, and we had necrosis anyway, so we were absolutely good to go. Can I get the next level? It's locked. Who locked it? Who locked the last genetic reshuffle? Why would you do that to me? I want to get some score reduction. Gosh dang it. FOP is going to destroy humanity. That's a terrible way to go. Gosh dang, the fact that diseases like this exist 
in the world today is just absolutely horrifying to me. Can you imagine being the parent of a child who gains like a hereditary disease? Actually, you know what? Can you imagine being a parent and then having a kid and you have this disease and you're terrified of passing it on? Gosh, dang, that's just, ugh. The fact that there are people who have to live with that in this in this world, it's just, it's one of the most heartbreaking and horrifying things I can possibly imagine. Anyway, 414 days, 40% cure progress, 57,900, uh, sorry, 57,900 points, I'm tired today, and two stars. Okay, overall I think the scenario is pretty good, I mean a few grammatical errors, but not too bad. Uh, mostly the premise of the scenario is the one that's, you know, the most uh, hard to believe, simply because this is supposed to be a hereditary disease that does not spread, it's not contagious. But if you're willing to suspend that and it's just a regular bacteria, then the transmission's not being very creative, it's okay. Because, you know, it still can get around by the normal ways that bacteria get around. Uh, the symptoms being unique. Now, that's where the real special stuff for this scenario comes in. That's the secret sauce. And I think overall they did a pretty good job. So, yeah, I will say that I uh, thumbs up this one and I recommend it. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. <laughs>